All right, hello everyone. Um, today we're going to be doing the CRM webinar. I am going to hold on uh, just about a minute or so to see if anyone who's kind of late joining can get in here and then we will get started. Alrighty then, I'm gonna go ahead and begin. So today's webinar will be covering CRMs and everything your nonprofit needs to know about them and how they can be beneficial to your organization. All right, just to start, I am your host, Austin Story. I am the Community Development Manager at Mighty Cause and my email is austin at mightycause.com. So if you have any questions, um, you know, after the webinar, feel free to reach out and I will bring this slide up again at the end um, just so you can jot this information down. All right, so today what we're going to be going over is what is a CRM? How do CRMs work? How can they benefit your fundraising efforts and your organization as a whole? How do you choose one? And then what does Mighty Cause have to offer in terms of the CRM? And then at the end, I will leave some time for questions. And then, like I said before, I'll put my contact info up as well so we can also have you know, further questions offline as well. Alrighty. So what is CRM? Now, in the world of business, you may have heard CRM described before as customer relationship management. Now, that terminology doesn't quite fit the world of nonprofits because it's not traditional um, you know there's not customers or anything like that so what the terminology changes to is client relationship management now clients could be anyone that interacts with your organization or has a relationship with your organization so they could be donors they could be volunteers they could be staff um, you know board directors any grant holders so number of different ways you could segment them but that's kind of where the terminology is gonna mean. So similar to the world of business, CRMs are valuable tools for nonprofit organizations, and they can save you both time and resources and give your organization um, some abilities to grow its donor base and its reach, because obviously getting your nonprofit's message out there is crucial. So any system that can help you do that um, will definitely be useful for your organization. All right, so client relationship management. So CRMs are systems that allow you to build and manage relationships with any of those clients of your organization. Like I said before, whether they're donors, volunteers, board members, it's not important. You can track all of them within a CRM system. Now these CRM systems are gonna allow for both the management of information and communication with all of the individuals that are a part of your CRM system. So each individual is gonna end up having their own unique information tied to them that you can do, then manage and access. And what's nice about a CRM is, is all the members of your organization that you want to have access will have access to that information. So you can kind of, it can be flexible how you access it. These CRM systems are going to have some automated tracking and automated information gathering processes within them, um, depending on which one you choose and which one you set up. And usually they do also have a manual portion as well. So some information may be tracked automatically, but almost always there's a way for you to also manually edit and input information on your own end. Additionally, CRMs generally are going to be customizable um, you know, it will depend on the one you choose, but almost all of them have some customizable features so that you can kind of organize the CRM in such a way that fits your organization's 
specific needs. All right, that's a quick just overview of CRMs, but now how do they work? What are kind of the functions of a CRM? So that's what we're gonna take a look at now. All right, now, as I said before, there's a number of CRM systems that exist. Um, there's lots of different options out there, different ranges, but generally speaking, they are going to have similar functions um, between all of them. So one thing that's gonna be pretty standard is CRMs are gonna allow for the organization and development of clients' profiles within unique information tied to each individual. Um, these profiles are either gonna be created automatically by the system or manually by you. Once those profiles get created, they're generally gonna be connected to either one or multiple outside sources that will then allow for information to flow through automatically and update their profiles. Then, like I said before, obviously, additionally, any manual information you want to update will also be something that is possible on CRM systems. An example of this is with most CRMs, you could have it set up where every time a donor makes a donation, they're a new donor to your organization. Profile will be created for them and then populate that donor information based on what the, you know, the donation amount, all of that. Then additionally, if they already had a profile, it's gonna be something where any new donations they make are automatically updated into their profile. So whether a new profile is created or it's just an update, it's gonna have some automatic processes and then some ways you could manually input information as well. All right. So, CRMs will function also as databases. So that's where all of that information is going to be held inside a database. So all your different profiles, all your individuals will be easily accessible and manageable within one database. Now, what this means is all the individuals will be, or all the individuals with your organization will have access to this. So you can kind of delegate tasks accordingly and everyone can have different roles in how you guys want to manage all the information of the clients in your system. Um, you're gonna have some abilities to track, tag, or segment groups of your clients by a number of different metrics. An example of this would be put all the individuals who are participating in volunteer opportunities into one group. You, know, you can segment by donation amounts, board members if they're grant holders, you know, important donors, it, it really doesn't matter, but you will have ability to kind of manage individuals in a way that makes sense for your organization. And you can have those in both large or small groups. And then it's almost always gonna have some sort of capability that will allow for email outreach. So you'll be able to message these groups and lists that you've created either in a bulk way, where maybe you wanna send a message to all your donors, like a newsletter, or in a more segmented way, for example, with your volunteers, you may want to send, you know, a specific list of volunteer opportunities, anything like that. And then large donors, it might just be individual, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one messages with them when you're trying to run, you know, maybe a large campaign where you need that large donor to chip in. All right. So those are some general functions of CRM systems that are pretty universal um, to a majority of CRMs. Now we'll kind of go over how those functions can benefit your organization. So benefits of CRMs, they're going to allow you to both build and grow your donor base, as well as increase the chances of retaining donors. By having you know, a good email system and some automated records, it's gonna save your organization time and give you more time to focus on the things that are important, such as building you know, successful fundraising efforts, different volunteer activities, you know, whatever your organization's goal is, it will give you more time to reach that goal and more outreach capabilities so that you can spread your message um, across the globe or just nationally, either one. Um, they, they will increase your organization's efficiency by organizing all that information in one place. So as I spoke to before, versus maybe just having it in you know, a number of different spreadsheets or anything like that disorganized, having it all in one place is really gonna give you the capability to work on it as a team 
and manage it as a team, consolidate those tasks so that everyone knows how to use it and what their role is in the CRM system. Um, additionally, you're going to have strategized outreach. That kind of goes back to those different lists um, versus just having to kind of manually go through and figure out which donors or which individuals you're trying to message about specific opportunities or tasks or fundraisers, you'll be able to group those individuals together. And by having them in specific lists that then you can then manage, you can strategize your outreach, you know, depending on what fundraisers you're doing, you can message different groups of people. For example, if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers where you actually have individuals joining your organization, and um, you know, trying to fundraise with you, there might be more different individuals that are more inclined to actually participate in those versus um, other individuals that are more likely just to donate. So by having that outreach kind of planned out, it makes it more efficient so you can bring the right people in to fundraise and then the right people in to donate. All right, so in spreading your organization's efforts efficiently, that kind of goes hand in hand with everything I just said. It's about management and making sure that everyone on your organization is on the same page. So something common that we run into is a lot of organizations um, are not using CRM systems. They are using spreadsheets. And now spreadsheets can be a useful management tool, but they do have their limitations in functionality and they definitely have a scaling difficulty. So as your organization grows and a larger number of records are need to be managed, it does become harder to manage all of those just within a spreadsheet system. So CRMs have a number of functions that give them an edge over a spreadsheet. Um, one, the ability to automatically update, so whether that's coming from you know, another software, a platform, whatever it is, having automatic updates versus manual input is gonna one, decrease the chances of mistakes that may be found, because um, that's common in a spreadsheet, you know, typo, anything like that can kind of mess up uh, a spreadsheet and how you can organize it. And it'll it, they become harder to manage in those spreadsheets. So what a CRM will do is it'll scale with your organization. So it's gonna be just as easy to manage 100 records as it is to manage thousands because of the ability to group individuals. And those easy ways to group and segment individuals is something that would be much more time consuming on a spreadsheet. In a CRM, you're going to be able to generally select different fields and automatically list people based on those fields and then group accordingly. Whereas in a spreadsheet, you may have to go through manually and look through specific pieces of information. Um, once again, this is speaking to the mistakes that can be made if someone has a piece of information missing, they may get left off of a group, and then that's someone you lost in that specific group that may have had potential. Um, once again, access by all members of your organization is another feature that allows the flexibility a spreadsheet can't provide. Now, you could have you know, a Google spreadsheet that's shared with everyone, but it's, it's not quite the same as having a system that's constantly updated that everyone could access. Because with a spreadsheet, everyone could access it potentially, but that just opens the door for more mistakes and maybe not everyone's on the same page. With a CRM, it's gonna be automatically updated so everyone can kind of jump in and do their own thing, have their own specific role, instead of having to navigate through a spreadsheet and manage that information that way. All right, and so here's just some examples of actionable tasks with a CRM. So you could sort supporters um, by a given number of donations or any specific metric. That's just an example. So maybe you want to take all your large donors, let's just say, for example, $5,000 or more, and put them in a specific group so you can message them. Um, you know, when you guys really need those large donations to come in, you know you can count on that group of individuals. Uh, another task is developing those outre outreach plans. So once you have those groups developed, um, you know, your volunteers, your board members, anything like that, you can start to build outreach plans for those specific groups and kind of line up like how you want to do your emails. Maybe you want to send um, one email a month, maybe towards the end of the year. If you guys have active, you know, holiday fundraising, you kind of pick up those emails. Maybe you're doing once a week, once a week, anything like that. 
then you could also have your global outreach. That's where you have your newsletters. So maybe you're sending your newsletters to everyone, every single person on the list. And then you have your different segment outreach for all those individual groups. Uh, additionally, you can catch your board up to speed with any key donors. So if you have a couple really large donors, you know, having them all have their own unique profile where that information is managed, you can pull up in an easy way versus having to go through that spreadsheet. You could just go to their profile and we could be like, okay, this is their donation history from the last couple of years. They've donated 10 times here, the dates, here's when they're most active. So you can update people quickly and competently versus having to navigate through, um, you know, a more manual sheet that may or may not have all the information. Additionally, with most CRMs, they're gonna have the ability to import those older records and donor history. So just to go back with my example of someone donates, a profile is created for them in your CRM. Well, what if they've already donated to you before and you already have that information? Well, almost all CRMs are gonna allow you to input that information. So even if you're new to the CRM, you can add all your old information and those old donations so that all of the history is still tracked within that CRM. Um, some other tasks, just customizing those donor profiles. So maybe there's specific fields you want in there, specific information you want to add about that donor. There's almost always some custom fields in a profile where you can jot down um, just specific information that may be very unique to that individual and may not fit a normal field um, that would be featured on a CRM. Um, another actual task is just manage and message your volunteer network. So a lot of CRMs are going to give you tools to, you know, track volunteer hours, manage volunteer opportunities. So these are going to be a number of different things that can, you know, streamline and like not just only your donor records, but your volunteer records into one place so you don't have multiple different avenues you're having to work with. All right. So next, choosing a CRM for your organization. So obviously there are a large number of CRMs, um, so it can seem overwhelming when trying to figure out which one fits your organization. Now, finding the right fit for your organization is gonna be very important. First, you're gonna to wanna to just sit down and assess what your organization needs, the very specific needs. So maybe you want a donor management system, maybe you want the ability to track volunteers. Those are things you're gonna to want to write down. And a good way to figure that out is, is maybe assess what are we lacking in terms of our ability to track and build relationships with donors? Are we doing that right now or is that something we're missing? Um, do we have a messaging system that's more efficient than just having to do bulk emails where we pull individual emails from a spreadsheet? Um, do we have a current way of managing donor records automatically? Are we just manually inputting everything, which opens the door to error, or do we have a way where it's kind of an automatic process? So you're going to need to answer questions like that and decide what's most important to your organization and decide what features you require out of the CRM system. Next, you're gonna to have to determine price point. Obviously, nonprofits, every dollar is extremely important. So you will need to figure out what you are willing to pay for CRM and kind of what is your expectation of the return on that investment. So, that because that's gonna be important for you. You know, you, you wanna price it so that you know we're gonna get a return on this and it's gonna be a net positive for our organization. Um, and kind of going hand in hand with that price point, you're gonna wanna find one too that will, will meet your needs as you grow as well. So you don't wanna find a CRM system that only fits you know, what you're doing right now. You wanna make sure that system will help you in the future because as you grow and get more donors and things like that, you're gonna wanna make sure that system will still work for you in the future so that you're not having to have this same discussion a year down the road after you guys have had some pretty you know, stagnant, excuse me, growth. All right, so what does Mighty Cause have to offer? So Mighty Cause does have a CRM system and I'm gonna kind of break that down and give you an idea of how it works, the capabilities. All right, so we have a complete CRM system and it's called our supporters tool. And so the way the supporters tool works, now whether you are on Mighty Cause right now or have never worked with Mighty Cause, 
Um, I think the way we have it set up is pretty cool. So if you're on Mighty Cause right now and you've used us for six months or so, this CRM system already has all the information from all those donors in there. So it is part of our monthly subscription plan, but whether you pay for it or not, the system always tracks all the donors and adds them in so that if you ever choose to use it, you don't have to play catch up. All those donors are already in there. Now, one thing we do is we already kind of take the task of assigning roles to the supporters in our supporters tool. So for example, if someone donates, they're gonna be added into that tool as a donor. Now, what if they're fundraising for you? So they're setting up a fundraising campaign for your organization. Well, they're gonna get assigned the role of organizer. Um, there's also the roles of volunteers, admins, which will be those working for your organization. So there's a number of automatic roles to already kind of automatically segment individuals so you can get an idea of what they've done for your organization. And individuals can obviously have multiple roles. So if someone's a donor and they've also fundraised for you, you'll be able to find them under your donor tag and under your organizer tag. So maybe that's how when you're doing a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, you can just look at all the people who have worked in the past on fundraisers and message them that way. Then you can just take your donor list and message them, you know, maybe a newsletter or every time you're running a campaign, you can just do a group outreach to all your donors. Um, then volunteers, obviously you can message them about volunteer opportunities and the like. Um, additionally, what you're gonna be able, to, of, able to do in our system is tag and segment all those individuals. So we kind of have those pre-designated roles that they're automatically put into, which is great. But like I said before, you wanna be able to use this system for your organization's needs. So you will be able to tag and create lists of different groups of people, you know, however you would want. If you wanna put the board members in a list, the donors in a list, um, if you wanna put the donors for specific campaigns, that's something I see a lot. So for example, Giving Tuesday, maybe you track all your Giving Tuesday donors each year, add them to the list, because they're really active during Giving Tuesday, you know those donors are gonna come through for you during that time. So that's just some examples. Obviously, um, you're able to create as many lists as you want within our tool. So the segmenting's really up to you and individuals can be a part of many different lists. So you could have you know, an individual part of a specific volunteer opportunity, part of your Giving Tuesday list, um, you know, part of your, if you have a 5K walk or something like that list. So you can put them in as many lists as you want, and then manage them that way. Then additionally, every single individual is obviously gonna have a profile in there. And here on the right, you can just see a sample of what that profile will look like. It will track all of their fundraising with the organization. So it's gonna track both their donations to your organization and how much they have fundraised to your organization. Then additionally, what it's going to do is any of the questions you add into the checkout, they are going to automatically populate in their profile. So that information you request will automatically be put in that tool for you to access. Um, and just to go back to the, the fundraising total, you'll be able to track their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this is not a full picture of the profile. Below this kind of main section, you'll have a list of all their donations to your organization and all of the fundraisers to your organization. So that's where you can kind of look and see if someone has the tag organizer, you can actually look down and see how, how many fundraisers have they organized for us? Because you could actually look and see maybe they've run 10 for you and you, you weren't even aware. So that's one way you can actually just kind of look and see who's really active for your organization. And so all those analytics will be at the bottom of those profiles and you'll be able to manage everything in terms of their donations, their um, fundraising history, their volunteer opportunities. So those profiles are gonna be comprehensive breakdowns of everything that individual has done with your organization. Additionally, um, with our advanced plan, there's gonna be options where you can integrate with outside applications for auto transfer of information. So you can have all of this information sent to a number of different applications outside of our platform, such as MailChimp, um, Constant Contact, 
a spreadsheet, Facebook, there's a number of different options. And that's something after the webinar, if you have an interest in what we can integrate with outside the platform, you can definitely message me on. Um, so some other features of our CRM system, obviously they have their own profiles, automatically put in on Mighty Cause. Now, what if you have lists of donors outside of the platform that you want to add in? Well, we have a template with spreadsheet so you can easily upload any donors from offline or just any, not necessarily donors, any individuals that you have relationships with, you can upload offline into our tool. Then additionally, if they're already living in our tool, you can update them. So for example, let's say someone um, you know, does a large offline donation, they write your organization a large check, and you wanna make sure you're tracking that in your profile. Well, that's something you can easily upload and update their profile with so that you can keep them up to date, whether or not donations are coming through Mighty Cause, you can still add them in so that they're managed correctly. All right. So the CRM is a part of the Mighty Cause Advanced Plan. So if you're familiar with Mighty Clause, there is a starter plan and an advanced plan. The CRM system is a part of our 99 a month subscription advanced plan. Now what's nice about this plan is there's no annual contract. So you can use this month to month um, as you see fit. Um, the CRM system is only one part of this. Um, there's also a volunteer management tool that kind of works hand in hand with CRM. So what that's going to allow you to do actually post volunteer opportunities, track hours, and all that information will be sent into our CRM so that each individual, you can look at their volunteer hours and how many opportunities they've managed for you. Um, additionally, you will have a branded donation page, an embeddable form that you can embed on your website. And the nice part about that is there will be no redirect. So you can actually have people process those donations on your website without leaving. And all that information will still get sent into Mighty Cause. Um, next, there's going to be data integration, which I spoke to before. So we do integrate with a number of applications. Um, so anything you're interested in, just let me know and I can let you know what our integration with them looks like and how it works. Um, additionally, you will have some donor surveys so you can actually build custom questions for your checkout and you can make those mandatory or optional. So if there's a specific metric you're looking for, I think one I see a lot is with that branded donation page, you can put that on your website and then ask the question, how did you hear about our organization? And maybe make that mandatory. And then you can kind of take, you know, after you get a bulk of donations, you can look at those and try and figure out, okay, what marketing efforts are bringing people to our website to donate? That way you can constantly improve. Having like specific metric questions is how you can really, you know, try and track what is working for us and then and try and get better because you don't want to stay stagnant. You want to continually be improving your efforts um, and finding out what is most efficient. Uh, then the last feature we're going to talk about there with the advanced plan is going to be text to give, which actually gives you the ability to create as many text keywords as you want and then have donors text in donations. And you'll also track that information as well. Um, that'll be tracked for you. So that's all a part of that Mighty Cause advanced plan. All right. And that's that's my presentation. So any questions now? please feel free to ask. We have some time that I'll answer questions and I'm gonna go back to the slide with my email as well. Um, if you have any additional questions I'm not able to answer today, or if you wanna learn more about the advanced plan or our CRM, or just any questions on the platform in general, feel free to reach out to my email, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave up here. And then any questions you guys have, I will go ahead and answer. So what about anonymous donations? So the way it works on Mighty Cause, we ask the donor for their first name, last name, and email. Now they can hide their donation from public view, but generally speaking, the organization is still going to receive that information. Um, so they have to put in an email. So you will always get an email. It is required for them to process a donation. Um, first name and last name are also required. Now, theoretically, they could write anonymous for first name and last name, but email must be provided. 
Um, will you get a cut? Yes, this is recorded. And so after this is done processed, um, you will be able to view this video recording um, afterwards. Do we integrate with donor search for comparable systems? Let me see. I have not heard of donor search. Give me one moment. Does not look like donor search. I will say a lot of um, competitor CRMs we may or may not integrate with. Um, we do integrate with a lot of apps like MailChimp, um, you know, Salesforce, Constant Contact, Gmail, things like that. But a lot of competitor uh, donor CRMs we may or may not integrate with. Um, we do integrate with QuickBooks Online. And so the way that integration works generally is every time a donor donates, um, whatever information they've provided is gonna be sent outward to QuickBooks. Um, so essentially all that information that lives in their profile is also gonna be sent to your QuickBooks. So whether you're using our CRM system or you like to manage in QuickBooks, it's gonna be the same information provided there and outside. Um, I believe you will get an email um, with access to the recording um, afterwards. It should be sending you an email. Um, if you don't get one, just shoot me an email, austin at mightycause.com. I can send you the link, but I do believe that goes out automatically. Yes, there should be a parent that inputs the information for youth volunteers um, per our uh what was it called kind of a, a, like uh rules and regulations yes they should um if, if they're under 18 they should be having someone uh, who's an adult input that information for those volunteer opportunities What version of QuickBooks? Um, I'm not sure the version number. It's QuickBooks Online is what we have the integration with. Um, there is a 14-day free trial of the advanced plan, um, not a 30-day trial. It is a 14-day, two-week trial. Um, and you do not have to put any credit card information in, so it is a risk-free trial for all those advanced features, so you can test those out. Um, and if you guys are curious where to find that trial, under your settings on Mighty Cause, there'll be a section that says plan management, and that's where you can go in and um, do the trial, and that's also where you would sign up as well. All right, other questions? Kelly, yes, yes, you can get a recording with this. Um, I, like I said, I do believe the recording, there should be a link that's sent out automatically. It could be wrong. Um, my email is listed here, so if you don't get anything, just feel free to shoot me an email and request the recording, and I will send you a link to it. Does our CRM have a moves management module for high level donor tracking and engagement? Um, so there's some ways you can just look at, um, so you can manage your donors and look at them like who's donated the most. So you can kind of organize it by that. Then you would want to put them in their own list. Um, so we don't have an automatic way where we put the high level donors in a list but you can easily look at which donors have raised the most for your organization and then put them in their own list and manage them that way. Um, so it's, it's not a module that's by default. It is something you would have to segment yourself within the tool.
Okay, thank you for confirming, Melissa. Yes, yeah. So webinar recordings should come automatically via email. Yes, you would define that. So like I was saying, you'd be able to just take the list of all your donors and then organize them by top donor down to bottom. So you would decide where's the cutoff. So you could literally basically select like, you know, everyone 5,000 and over, we're gonna put in our, you know, key donor list. Um, you know, that's completely, you would essentially define that though, yes. All right, other questions? Ah, so when you're, when you're uploading donor data, what do you need to put in as a minimum? is just so you can just add people individually i think all you all you need is first name last name and email and then you have to assign them a role so basically first name last name email and donor so you don't even have to put in their donation history that's the minimum is just first name last name email and then their role um, as a donor that's the minimum and so there's literally there's a spreadsheet template and it's very easy to kind of use and upload but so baseline minimum is just that information then any additional information you can obviously provide but it's just first name last name email and then what their designation is for your organization donor volunteer anything like that if you don't have email you won't be able to upload them so that is something you're going to want to access because the system is built around doing email outreach. So all the profiles, that's the unique identifier for them is the email address. All right, other questions? Uh, and I'll just mention again, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one demo, feel free to reach out to me as well as any questions, you can reach out to me as well. Um, but I, I will do one-on-one -on -one demos with anyone who's interested. Yeah, Melissa, that sounds correct. Yes, if you just make up an email, it would probably take it, and then you could edit it once you find one out. Mm -hmm. But it is uh, the main thing I wanted to go over there is it is required to have something in that email field to upload. So if you just want to put in, you know, kind of a, a fake email when you're still trying to get that information, you could do that. You're just going to want to make sure at, at another point to actually, um, once you do get their real email, try and put it in there. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so those individuals, you would want to kind of do that for all of them and then hopefully try and get that information at a later date. But you could definitely still upload all of them into the tool. They would just obviously not be someone you could reach out to with our email capability because um, their email would not be listed into the tool. Yeah, completely understand. Lots of organizations don't have um, or only have address. So 
um, there's definitely, you can work around that, but um, to really get the full benefit of that email system, obviously ideal world, you would have emails for everyone, but um, you know, it's not necessarily something you'll have. The upside is any donors you receive through Mighty Cause will have to provide an email. So kind of moving towards the future, as long as they're coming through Mighty Cause, um, they'll have to provide the email. So that's not something you'll have to worry about updating for the new donors that are coming into your organization. So text to give, text to give is not a um, system where you're sending messages out. The way our text to give is designed is you create a keyword. So let's just say I use my, my name. So I have a keyword, Austin, I'm running a fundraising campaign, Austin's fundraiser. So my keyword is Austin. All I need to do is I need to let my donor base know you need to text Austin to the phone number will be listed um, in the text to give section. But so you need to text Austin to this phone number and you'll be sent to the donation checkout for the corresponding campaign. So it, the donor kind of activates the text to give. They send the text and then they're sent to the checkout. But our text to give is not for sending text to them. It's a one way system. So they text in, they put in their donation um, and you will be able to track you know, if I had my keyword Austin, I get 10 donations um, and it ends up being $100. I'll be able to see that I got 10 donations and that total amount was $100, if that makes sense. Um, we can also, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one demo of that, please feel free to reach out because I can kind of walk through it um, visually uh, as well. Yes, we will still collect the email address. Okay, I'm, I misunderstood your question. Mm -hmm. All of our checkouts, the required information is first name, last name, and email. So whether they're using text to give, our embeddable form, or just coming straight on the platform, um, that will be something required in the checkout. All right, so any last minute questions, guys? So I'm going to wrap this up in a couple minutes here. Um, and once again, feel free to reach out to my email. Um, I'm fine to do one-on-one -on -one demos where I will actually kind of walk through these features on the platform and I will show and tell. And, you know, I can obviously kind of focus on things that your organization specifically wants to look at. So feel free to send an email out to me. I'm happy to do that. Looks like we don't have any other questions, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And you should also, you'll get sent this uh, recording via email um, to your inbox. Feel free to follow up with me, and I hope all you have a great day and uh, enjoy the upcoming weekend as well. Alrighty, guys. Have a good one.